Hello, this is Pete. Welcome to the EmpowerCast iWork series, Keynote for Beginners. This is episode 5 of a 12-part beginner series to be followed by a 12-part intermediate series and a 12-part advanced series. In episode 5, we're going to cover making your, your first slide working with the title and bullets. So I'm here at my theme chooser in Keynote, and I'm just going to go through and choose a, a theme to get started. So we're going to go with Showroom here. Click choose. So as always, before I get started, I'm going to go down to the zoom pull down menu and change it from 100% to fit in window to make sure I'm seeing the entire slide in the window. And you can see here as a default in every theme, there are text boxes that are associated with that theme's default. So this particular theme uses Gil Sands Light as the default text. And as you can see from the instructions, you just double click to edit. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in the box there. So this particular theme has an interesting default to it, and that is the title is set to default to all caps. And whether you use the shift key or not, you're going to get all caps in the default text box for the title. Now that can be kind of frustrating because you may not want all caps for your title. Like for instance, I really don't want all caps for my title especially because the word I work really traditionally has a lowercase I, a capital W, and then a lowercase ORK. So I really want to change the default case of this text here. So I'm going to make sure that that text box is selected and go up to Format, choose Font, go to Capitalization, and you can see I have some capitalization options. So right now it's on all caps. We've got small caps and title case. I'm just going to choose none. Cool. I'm also not a big fan of the font that's used by default in this theme, this Gil Sands Light. So I'm just going to select both text boxes by dragging and selecting both. And once they're both selected, I can just go up to the format bar here and use the format bar to change the font. So I'm going to go down here to Myriad Set. And there's many more advanced text options to come in later episodes of the EmpowerCast iWork series. So when I go up to the play button in the upper left hand corner, click play, all the text by default is simply on the screen with no timed builds or anything like that. It's just default. Great. I'll use the escape key to go back to my canvas and use the plus button also up in the upper left hand corner to add a new slide. This may not be the master that I prefer to have as my second slide. So before I do any editing on that slide, I'm going to go up to Masters, click for the pull down menu, and you can see here this particular theme has lots of different master slides to choose from. Take a look at that title again. It's in the all caps case, so I'm going to select that text box Go up to Format, Font, Capitalization, None. So again, to edit, I'll double click. Say Episodes in this series. And again, the font is wrong, so I'm going to use my mouse cursor to drag and select both text boxes. Go up to the font, change it to Myriad Set. And now you see I have the double click to edit down here. And this text, by default, is going to give me a bullet. And you see here I have a little bullet indicating that each of these bulleted items are list or bulleted points. So I'll just type a few things here. Now by default when I use the return key or the enter key on the keyboard my cursor will drop down to the next line and I'll get a new bullet. So now I'll type episode 2. Cool now if I want to drop down to add something to an existing bullet without creating a new bullet I can simply hold the shift key and then use the return or enter key. And notice I can start typing here. And that has allowed me to add something to the existing bullet without creating a new one. So again, that's the shift key. And then use return or enter to drop down without creating a new bullet. Cool. Now I'll do the return or enter key again to create a new bullet. And through the magic of iMovie editing, you didn't have to watch me type all that. Cool, now I've got my four bullets inside my second keynote slide of my presentation. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a fifth here just to give you an example of 
what happens now. And then when I press enter or return to do the sixth bullet, notice uh, my cursor has disappeared kind of off the map. And if you look here at the bottom of the text box, I have a new indicator. Now that little plus indicator there is telling me that you've gone off the boundaries of the text box and whatever you type now is going to be out of the view or out of the bounds of the text box. So I could keep typing, but I can't see what I'm typing. And when I click play on my presentation, the viewers aren't going to see what I'm typing either. So it doesn't make much sense to go any further unless I grab that plus and expand that text box to fit so I can put in episode six. Okay, now when I click play to present this to my viewers, we've got my six bullets and my title at the top. Now, by expanding that text box, what I've done is moved it so the text is down a lot closer to the bottom of the screen than it would have been if we had left the text box alone. I don't like that because now my design isn't weighted properly. I've got way more space up top here than I do down here at the bottom. And just for design sense purposes, I really should have an even amount of space at the top than I do at the bottom. Now Apple's designers kept that in mind when they designed this slide, but I came along and expanded this text box kind of throwing off the weight of the slide. So I'm going to undo what I've done here. Use the Command Z shortcut. There, now I'm back to four bullets in my text box. Now because I have eight bullets that I'd like to present on this slide, I want to take this text box and split it right down the middle so a new column starts over to the right instead of the text traveling down through the boundaries of the text box where we can't see it. So to do that, I want to make sure my text box is selected, and I can tell it is because it's got the handles around it, and open my inspector, and in the text inspector, which is the letter T icon in the inspector bar, we have an option for columns. So my text box is selected, I go to the text inspector, and click on columns. You can see here that that particular text box is right now just set to one column. If I up that to two, then it'll split that text box into two columns, or I could go three, four, however many I want it. So let's zoom out here. My text box now, which is just one big box, crank that up to two columns. And now when I drop down to the next bullet, use the enter key again, and you see I start out in the new column. There, now when I play my presentation, I've got my header, my bullets, and now I've created a two column layout. Now you notice here that this column is justified to the left, meaning all the text gravitates to the left side of the text box or the left side of the column break. And the text box is also set to be weighted in the center. So all the text gravitates to the center instead of going up to the top or down to the bottom. We can tell that because these three bullets are centered in the middle of the text box vertically and we might want for a cleaner look for those bullets to gravitate to the top of the text box. That option is available in the same text inspector. We're going to go back to the text tab and here you have options for how you want the text weighted inside the text box. So do you want it to gravitate to the top, gravitate to the middle, or gravitate to the bottom? So there's your vertical justification, and then your horizontal justification is here. So left justified, center justified, right justified, justify the text to stretch it out to the right and left boundaries. So to get these bullets lined up with the top of the text box boundaries, I've got my text box selected, and I use the little up arrow there, and everything's lined up at the top. Be sure to tune in to episode 6 where we'll be working with your images on your keynote slides. This is Pete from Empower Mac and I want to thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe, give us a rating, and leave a comment. Your feedback always helps me create better presentations. Thanks again.